Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here and today I'm bringing you a book review of Ask Iwata. And so if you have heard anything about this, this is sort of the semi-biography, semi-commentary on Nintendo's former president who passed away, I believe it was in 2015 if memory serves. It is kind of an interesting book and I think a lot of times, you know, when this was sort of announced and Nintendo fans were kind of responding to it, they wondered if it was sort of essential reading. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And I will just say right off the bat that it's really kind of a breezy read. You know, as someone who tries to read semi-frequently uh, a number of different types of books, it doesn't take long to get through this. I really think someone who was dedicated to doing it could make it through it in an evening with no issues whatsoever. In fact, looking back at it, it's something like, and I will give you this information now, 147 pages or somewhere in that range. So again, Pretty brief, not you know a whole lot there, but it does have some interesting insights, and I think there are a lot of different ways to sort of uh, dig into this. So let's talk about it a little bit. To me, first and foremost, this is the type of book that I could see companies and organizations giving to leaders, right? Because I think a lot of it has to do with you know how to think creatively in leadership roles and how to respond uh, to employee needs. So I think. You know, from that perspective, it's kind of a business self-help book, which may be a little bit unexpected depending on what you knew about it going into the book. Uh, but from that perspective, it is kind of interesting. I don't know that that aspect of it is going to appeal to everybody, uh, just you know, given the content that's there. But I think what people are interested in is, you know, does this give us any insights about Nintendo and how they operate as a company? And again, does it give you any kind of interesting biographical tidbits about? Uh, Iwata himself and sort of how he ran things, how he thought, and how he ended up being so influential in the world of gaming. The answer to both of those questions is yes. So I think it does give you some insights into how Nintendo operates as a company and you've got even a lot of commentary from someone like Shigeru Miyamoto as well, right? Creator of Mario and a number of important uh, and prominent Nintendo titles. So I think from that perspective, there is a lot to sort of take away from here, and it is really kind of interesting, and I think it just highlights what a lot of us already know, which is to say that Nintendo sort of does its own thing, and they never want to sort of rest on their laurels, right? They are always thinking, you know, what have we not done yet, and what would make people really enjoy gaming, and how do we sort of appeal to a wider audience? So they are not trying to compete with Microsoft and Sony. And I think that that, without you know, outright saying it, is evident in this book. You know, it's, it's really sort of emphasizing that as a company, you know, Nintendo is always trying to be innovative. They're trying to do things they haven't done before. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I think more often than not, it does work. But if you think about something like the Wii U, and that was you know, obviously something that didn't work out in the way that they had wanted it to. But one of the things that's noted here is that Iwata really pushed the idea of having a system with two screens, some kind of system with two screens. That's where the DS came from, and they never really say it, but I imagine in some capacity that influenced the Wii U as well because it was essentially, because of the gamepad and because of the television, a two-screen system. I think the other biographical information here is interesting, and it just highlights what a great person Iwata was, right? I mean, you know, everyone who's in here providing insights about how he lived personally and in the business world just talks about how nice he always was, how he really went out of his way to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with people uh, to try and, you know, see what perspective they were bringing to the table and to see how, you know, people could bring a lot of different ideas together without canceling out too much. So he was a computer programmer first, but that really sort of helped influence his thinking as president of Nintendo when he got into that role. So, you know, ultimately, again, the question is, you know, is this essential reading for Nintendo fans? I would say no, but I think it is interesting reading. I think it's worth the evening or two that it would take to get through this just because it's kind of a pleasant read. It's kind of breezy. There's not uh, anything too overbearing in it, and it just gives you a little bit of a glimpse of a window into how Nintendo operates, and I think reaffirms what a lot of us kind of know about the company. So in that regard, yeah, I think it's a good read. I think if you maybe catch the book on sale, it's worth picking up. Um, but I did. I, I enjoyed it, and I thought, you know, it was time well spent. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Asking Wada. If you've read it, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and let's have some discussion.